remember their change of my voice before I pick up where I left off with the coming of the kingdom of God okay I'd like to point out that it's a recurring theme in the New Testament right in the Gospels of Christ God versus money right we see in Luke 15 it talks about the parable of the lost sheep the parable of the lost coins the parable of the lost son so they're comparing things to things that actually have value they're saying the money doesn't have value the sheep and the food doesn't have true value what true value is is the spiritual ideas that these things refer to right so chase the spiritual ideas even if it kills you prioritize putting that first okay this is a recurring theme right the parable of the shrewd manager the shrewd manager is still going to hell okay because he chose to prioritize his worldly wealth and he basically gets designated as some kind of demon to abuse um, the, the sinners on earth and then he gets thrown in the lake of fire and so do they the rich man and, and Lazarus okay another very key uh, story about God versus money okay we'll get into that Luke 17 okay sin faith and duty it says don't lead the little ones astray Okay, and the coming of the kingdom of God. And it says, don't, um, don't be too busy caught up in money and finding your life, okay, when the top martial arts comes back. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that very shortly. Okay, and then Luke uh, 18, you see the persistent widow, right? She cares about her husband more than she cares about the money, and it, it you know, has implications on Jerusalem and so on and so forth, okay? Um, we see the Pharisees and the tax collector, okay? The little children in Jesus, the rich in the kingdom of God. Jesus predicts his, his death a second time. And a blind beggar receives his sight, okay? So they're trying to get you to see clearly and, and to focus on God, right? Focus, right? Your vision. Okay, so I think in the last thing I might have gotten the chapters out of order a little bit. Again, they're doing things because they're out of order. And these are people, just like it says in the Bible, they call good evil and evil good. They call out of order he who is in order. And in order, they who are out of order. Pretty straightforward, okay? And you can imagine that sometimes they call people out of order, out of order too, to confuse things you get. Luke 19. Okay? In Luke 19, we see Zacchaeus, the tax collector, right? The parable of the ten minas. Jesus comes to Jerusalem, okay, as king. And Jesus at the temple, okay, I believe that's one's about chastising the moneylenders. So you see it's again and again. And this is around the time of uh, Luke 18, verse 20 through 37, where it says the coming of the kingdom of God. So it's saying, again, it's God versus money. And we see in Luke 20, the authority of Jesus' question. They're saying, okay, why are you arguing that we shouldn't put money first? Whose authority are you doing this, right? The parable that... Um, The parable of the tenants, right? You know, they, they kick out the heir. Last of all, he sent his son. They'll respect my son, he said. Okay, and they kick him out because they're concerned with worldly things. They're like, hey, we're concerned with the women and our social status and things like this and the money. So they kill the heir in the parable of the tenants, also known as the parable of the wicked husband. And there's paying taxes to Caesar. Okay. The resurrection and the, and the marriage, I believe it is. And whose son is the Messiah and warning against uh, the the teachings, the teachers of the law. Okay, some of that effect. I kind of wrote this quickly because I was in a hurry because I wanted to finish making this, you know, this video before they start feeling me heavily again. So, okay, man, I'm falling behind. Okay, let's, let's go to here again. Um, we're skipping ahead and we're going to go back to uh, uh, Luke 16 in a moment. We're skipping ahead to Luke 17. Okay, and I'm going to do this again in the next video, I guess, yeah, looking at the timeline. So Jesus and the, uh, excuse me, first Jesus and the men with leprosy, then the coming of the kingdom of God. So how does he heal people, right? Listen carefully. This proves definitively that it's not money or, or money invested into research that heals people. Okay, it is God's spirit through martial arts. You'll see that with the flood and the lightning, okay? The flood and the lightning and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So write that down. The flood, the lightning, and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as key parts in the coming of the kingdom of God. Okay, the flood, the lightning, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, and also 
the kingdom of heaven being in your midst, right? It's it's in the it's in the divine order. You people are not in the divine order because you're not obeying God through me. If you were, you've received the spirit from me. You know, says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Those who obey my commandments will not taste death, right? They're the walking life. They're the way, the truth, and the life. And they'll be in the warrior spirit of God. So you have to join me in the warrior spirit. Even the word atonement, when we break down the word, the root words there, at one mind, at one meant, meant meaning mind like in the word mental. Okay, so coming together with the same mentality. How could I be thinking, hey, you know, it's a divine order and I'm supposed to lead and you're thinking, oh, he doesn't need to lead, right? We're, we're in disagreement there and that is very key because God is the almighty, right? And there's kings, King Solomon, okay, King uh, uh, Asa and Hezekiah and King David and Saul. There's kings that are appointed by God and there's prophets like Samuel and Amos and Isaiah and Jeremiah. So how could I say, hey, you know, you must obey God through me. And you're saying, no, 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 I, no, I'm my own king. And da, da, da. see a house divided cannot stand. So what is the true house? It's the house of David, David versus Goliath. It's a martial art order. Okay. You'll see that in a second. You'll see how it's not a slingshot in a lucky shot order, but it's martial art principles, martial art order, Royal African Falcon, Hebrews and Afro-Asiatic language. Listen carefully. The coming of the kingdom of God. Once I'm being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say here it is or there it is because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Another translation or within you. It's within those who have the, it's in the spirit of those in the martial art order who are in one mind. Atonement. They've atoned for sin. They're, they have contrition. They've re repented. They've been redeemed because they, they, they had contrition. They were serious and sorry. Okay. And they atoned for their sin at one mind. How? By being in the martial art order in, you know, before it's too late. Okay. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. What do you mean? But yes, but you will not see it. People will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running after them. Now, what is the sign? Now, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Write this down. Okay? Write it down. Put it on your wall. Okay? Luke 17, 24. For the Son of Man in his day, not night, day, right? Associated with the sun. We'll get to that will be like lightning, light associated with sunlight. We'll get to that. Which flashes and lights and lights up the sky from one end to the other, right? So the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star, the sun. Okay, the sun in righteousness, Malachi. The sun, the symbol of the bridegroom, Psalm 19. Lightning and the sun. Fast, fasting and striking fast. Listen carefully, listen carefully. Okay. So in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. This already happened, right? You know, it's the people of Rome and the Middle East, all of the world, right? The gospel preached around the world, whether it happened in Rome or Nigeria or wherever it happened, Ethiopia, wherever it happened, this has happened already. Suffer many things and rejected. Just as it was in the days of Noah so also will be in the days of the Son of Man. So they say, well, you know, you know, a lot of people say things like, they say stupid things. They say, hey, you know what? Every eye will see him. No, it says, he who has an eye, let him see. Read Isaiah. It says, they'll be ever seen, but not perceiving, ever hearing, excuse me, ever listening, but not hearing, okay? And see uh, Matthew 5, where it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, okay? So it says, just as it was in the days of Noah, so will also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. See, up to the day till what? Noah entered the ark. Is he talking about it's going to be like he's going to be on a cloud literally and everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, it's true. I repent now. No. He's saying they're not going to be in the cloud. Okay? They're not going to be in the cloud. They're not going to be in the spirit, the cloud that comes around the people when, when, when um, um, God talks to the people in Mark and he says, this is my son, who I'm pleased with. They're in a cloud. A voice came, a cloud came around them and over them, okay? And a voice came. The cloud is the spirit, the collection of the water, the living water of God, the collection of righteousness. In the king's heart, excuse me, in the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels to those who please him. It says in Proverbs, okay? Do you have any questions? Ask them in the comments. It says, they're, they're not gonna be like, oh my gosh, there he is. What have I done? I'm going to start repenting. Instead, they're like, oh, oh, and boom. Okay, now if you look at Revelation, if you look at Revelation, what has happened? What has happened is they're being hit with a sequence of events. 
It isn't until Revelation 19, write that down, Revelation 19, that Jesus comes back and he's waging war with righteousness and justice. Okay? So what has happened? They've come into him already. And you can see but Revelation before that, it says these, these people died because they, they didn't love their life so much as to shrink from death. They didn't love finding their life in this world so much as to shrink from death. Okay, you see that in Revelation. Also, you see under the, the souls under the altar saying, how long, sovereign and, and true, until you avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? So they come into the martial arts spirit and accept being screened out. And then hell, there's hell to pay. People here are sealed in hell. And when they die, the, the, the smoke from their torment rises forever and ever, Isaiah 66. And the worm that uh, consumes them will never be quenched. The sexual immorality that ruled over them, their desire to do it their own way instead of have the true love from God will consume them as they live in disgrace forever and ever with their offspring and the, any offspring they have and their ancestors as they die and so on and so forth. Okay? That's what it's saying. They're feeling me, make it a little bit harder for me to communicate, but you should understand what I'm saying. If you have any questions, put in the comments. I urge you to watch it several times. Take notes. If you think I'm contradicting myself, maybe they changed my words. They probably didn't, but maybe they did, at least at this point. Then ask me and try to, you know, if you think I'm lying, then call out that what you think is a lie. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it together. Okay? Where are we here? Um, so people were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. So what aren't you supposed to be doing? You're not supposed to be marrying. You're not supposed to be reproducing. It goes back to Luke 23. It said, blessed are the childless women, the breasts that never nursed, the wombs that never bore. Why? Because the vine is dry. Righteousness the righteousness is, is like a green leaf, it says in Proverbs. The vine is dry. And he said, I am the true vine. Okay? Christ's spirit, his warrior spirit, lightning, the flood, right? It's a warrior spirit. Okay? Uh, uh, it, 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 his righteous warrior spirit isn't there. They don't have the armor of God. Okay? The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helm of salvation, right? They're listening to these bitch-ass motherfuckers who are allowed to speak without being fumed. Oh, he doesn't know what he's saying. He's probably mentally ill because I'm being persecuted for righteousness sake. There's not. You tell those bitches, Matthew 5, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Not your punk-ass church and your laughable excuse for persecution. You worms. You cowards. You demons. Incidentally, the word demon is odd man scrambled. Anyway, it was the same in the days of Lot. Say Noah, Lot. It's the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. So again, Noah, the flood, Lot. Fire and sulfur rained. He used the word rained, right? It's a flood. It's a flood of what? Literally of water? No. Okay, we see in the Old Testament, the flood, I believe it's Jeremiah. It's a, uh, toward the end of Jeremiah, it says the troops are compared to a flood. Okay, the troops come flooding in, right? It's a flood of spirit, of a warrior spirit. Okay, and, and the snares that God allows people to, to be uh, consumed by. Okay, so all these wicked people in the military and the police and so on, intelligence agencies, gangs and so on. So they're abusing you in what spirit? Why is God allowing that to happen? When it does happen, why are you crying like a bitch? Or why are you going out like a bitch instead of fucking, you know, do, acting like a holy man? Because you didn't have the armor of God. So you didn't respond in a way that's respectable. You responded like another punk. Think about it. So people were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. They're trying to find their lives. Okay, but the day left, got, the, excuse me, the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day of the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside shall go down to get them. Likewise, no one in their field shall go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be... Uh, in one bed, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Where, Lord, they asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Okay, this is a very occult saying. And I, I, I go as far as say it's not important to interpret that part. Okay? Because it's not saying half the earth is going to remain. No, because it says narrow is the way to salvation. Broad is the way to destruction. Okay? It is, you can look at it as the two women in Galatians 4, 
right? Jerusalem in the sky, you know, Mount Sinai and Jerusalem in the sky, so to speak, versus Jerusalem of this world, right? The flesh-based people led by the flesh-based Jews, the white LGBT community, and, and they're going to be left to, to suffer. Oh, well, I'm out of time.